what I've been looking for is the sword. The only sword that I have found that is the cheapest is 103,000, which technically I can't afford it right now. But as, or actually I can't right now. I only have 101. I was able to a little while ago. Welcome back to the chaos. I am Cass Eclipse. Today we are going to be looking at transmute stations. Um, this is mainly for people who are returning to ESO that have not played for quite some time like myself because I didn't well I mean I have for a while but when I first came back to the game I didn't even know that this was a thing um, it just took some some time to find out exactly what it was and how it works things like that so I just wanted to share it with you guys obviously this is mainly for like I said either new players or people that are returning to the game that don't know about this so when I say returning to the game I'm not saying like if you were gone for like a month or something when I stopped playing, I pretty much stopped for, I want to say is a couple years, at least a couple years, maybe even longer than that, but it was at least a couple years. Um, when I came back to the game, they kind of reworked the loot system and everything like that, and I had no idea about it. Um, I found out just by looking up older videos of, you know, what, what was happening, the updates, everything like that. So transmute stations before we get to those let me talk about the loot system real quick so the way that the loot in the game works currently is um you have your collections book here nope nope there we go your collections book here um which this collection book a lot of people just call it a sticker book um a lot of you guys have known about this and you guys are like that's nothing new okay the difference is um, you can actually reconstruct all of the stuff in these books as long as you've at least collected it once. So currently I'm working on a PvP set. One of the uh, sets that I want for PvP is called Vicious Death. So if we come in here and we take a look at my Vicious Death set, and I keep going to the wrong thing there. So we're going to come down to PvP because it is a PvP set. You have to basically know where the set drops at. So if it drops out of dungeons, you'll go to dungeons and then you'll find, you know, whatever area that, uh, or not area, you'll find whatever dungeon that's in. So say I wanted the Rattle Cage set, um, I come here to Vault of Madness and here you can see the Rattle Cage set. It'll show you all the pieces that you have gotten. Um, for me, I am doing the PvP one, which is dropped in Cyrodiil. Well, I don't think it's dropped in Cyrodiil. I think you can just get it from Cyrodiil using the, uh, the coffers. So I will come all the way down to the bottom where my Vicious Death Set is. Right about here. Hey, look at that, right on it. So, I, as you can see, I have almost everything in here. The only piece I'm missing is the sword. I don't need the sword, technically. Um, but I want to compare some things here just for you guys. So if we take a look at this Vicious Death Set and we look at the Warden, or I'm sorry, Ward of Cyrodiil, um, depending on whichever set you want, doesn't matter. Um, I'm just using these two because there is some differences here. So I have almost the entire set of the Vicious Death. I have only one piece of the Ward of Cyrodiil. If you look to the right here, right above where my cursor is at, you can see that it says cost 75. And if you look at this one, it says cost 27. So the more pieces you have discovered, the cheaper that cost is going to be. You guys are probably like, what's that cost? Well, that's what also I'm going to talk to you guys about. As you can see, this one here, I can't do anything because I don't have any pieces. So it looks like the cheapest one ever will probably be 75. Um, but this also looks like it's missing some things here. Um, I don't really know what it's missing because these look... Oh, you don't have any of the stabs in this one. So let's see if we can find one with everything. Yeah, so it's still 75 if you have only one piece. So this is three rows just like the Vicious Death set. But I only have the one piece, so this is the only piece I would be able to do in this one, and it would cost 75. If I'm doing my Vicious Death set, it would be 27. I believe if I get that sword, it would be um, 25. So because these drop in there and they're not bind on pickup, um, what I've been doing is I've been going around to the vendors, and I've literally just been buying the sets, and you bind them to your character. There are three ways to bind them to your character. The first way is by actually equipping it. That will bind it to your character. Um, the second way... Let me find a piece here. Um, I think I have some pants. Okay, I already... Okay, these aren't bound. Um, well, they are bound. Uh, so, you can see... It, actually, they're not bound, technically. 
So at the top, you see, you can see it says bind on equip, but I have already collected these. So if I wanted to bind this item in particular, I can either put it on, like I can actually equip it, like so. It'll tell you equipping the, the breaches. I, I say breaches, I, bridges. I, I don't know. I was I grew up saying bridges. I, don't, I guess it's breaches. I don't know. Anyway, it, it says uh, breaches of vicious death will permanently bind to your account. So I'm going to hit cancel because I don't know if I want these ones specifically because it comes with a specific enchant, comes with a specific um, trait on it. But the set overall is something that I want. Now, I already have some of these collected. I, I had other pants that I was able to go ahead and either break down or bind them to my account, whatever. Um, at the top, you can see where it says bind on equip. It also says collected. So that means that I've already bound some of these to me. It just was not this set. So the first way I can do it is by equipping it. That would bind it to my character. Second way is by hitting triangle on this. And you can see here, I can actually hit bind and I'll never even have to equip it. It'll automatically bind. The last way is if I come over to, what were those? Those are light. So if I come over here to whatever type of armor it is, so if it's heavy, I would go to blacksmithing. If it's light or medium, I would come to the clothing station here and you can actually deconstruct them wherever they're at. I know I have a whole bunch of stuff in here, guys. Um, that's not it. Oh, it's because they're locked. That's why. So I have a lock on them so I don't accidentally do it because I might end up using those. Um, but, and then the rest of these are ready. Oh, wait, here's some. So here's some that you can see I don't have collected at all. Uh, it is a, a red mountain thing. So if I wanted to bind this to my account, I could just de deconstruct it by hitting square. By hitting, oh, I have to hit X first. And then by hitting square, you can see there it does bind to my account. It says sets updated helmet of red mountain collected. So that means I collected the the uh, the thing there. Um, I guess technically there's four because you can also research that item if it's if the trait's researchable. I think that also does it, but it counts as a deconstruction. So basically those are the ways that you can bind it to your account. Now once those are bound to your account, that's when they will pop up in your set items here. Um, like we looked at with the vicious set, I have everything except the sword because I buy these or you can buy these with, um, Alliance points and they come in coffers, but it's completely random and they're not bound on pickup. The way that I've been doing this with this set in particular, you can't do it with all of them. Like if it's a, um, an overland set that binds on pickup or anything like that, obviously you won't be able to do it because it's going to be bound to you as soon as you pick it up. But with this set, since it's not. You can actually find this in any of the guild traders. So what I do is I run around and I will check all the popular zones. I'll come up to the guild trader here. Can I'll I speak with you? them and you can see I still have been looking for it. So I already have vicious typed in here. I have it set to all items, any quantity or any quality. And then I'll hit square to search and it brings up all the vicious death set. Now, obviously, if there's something else that says vicious, it'll probably bring up that too. But um, if you want to be very specific, you can type in vicious death. Um, what I've been looking for is a sword. The only sword that I have found that is the cheapest is 103,000, which technically I can't afford it right now. But as, or actually I can't right now. I only have 101. I was able to a little while ago. Um, but, um, I don't want to end up breaking the bank on my character. Like I want some spending money. Um, although technically we can do some, uh, some daily writs because that did just reset a little while ago. But my point is that you can come around, you can buy all the sets. The more yeah, of the pieces of the set that you buy, then the cheaper that it's going to be to um, to craft it. Now, the crafting part is the, the meat and potatoes here of the video. This is what I wanted to talk about. So, first of all, the cost of these, that what I was talking about over here where it says uh, cost 75, those are transmute crystals. So if you look up in the top left over there, you can see that it says 562 out of 1,000 transmute crystals. I have the maximum of 1,000 because I own uh, ESO Plus. So if you are paying a monthly subscription for the game, um, which I don't even know how much it is because I buy multiple months at a time. But if you are paying for it, you will get a max of 1,000 that you can carry at a time. If you are not paying for it, you don't have to, but if you're not paying for it, 
um, you're only going to get a max of 500. Although 500 is still not that bad. Once again, with that vicious death set, um, if we look at all of the pieces here, so technically, if I wanted a full set, I would need at least five pieces. I don't have to buy every single one of these pieces. I only need five pieces. Right now, it's at 27. Um, so if I'm able to unlock the sword and I actually can get that down to 25, which doesn't really matter too much, 27 is still not bad. But if I can, you know, get the sword and knock that down to 25, then the way that that's going to work is I would only have to pay 125 um, total transmute crystals to have a full set of this. And when you craft these, you can actually make it whatever... Of course, you have to have the materials for it, but you can put whatever enchantment on it, you can put whatever trait you you want on it and you can make it whatever uh quality so like these ones are uh what is blue i think it's called i think blue is rare and then um purple would be epic and then uh the yellow or orange whatever people want to call it i call it yellow but the yellow item is legendary so of course like i said as long as you have those pieces um or i'm sorry the material to be able to craft uh, a legendary item, then you can make them all legendary if you want to. So if we take a look here, I believe the Vicious Death set is all light uh, armor. Yeah. 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 So this is all light armor. So if we come over to our armor set over here, and I just want to see something here, we're going to go to improvement. I'm not actually going to do this. So I have 70... Uh, it costs Drew Wax. 8 Drew Wax for 100% chance to upgrade to Legendary. Um, and it's 8 pieces. Or I'm sorry. Yeah, 8 uh, Drew Wax in order to do 1 piece. So if I'm doing 5 pieces, 8 times 5, that's what? 45? I, I think that's 45. I'm so bad at math. Yeah, 45. I had to do it on my fingers, literally. Um, anyway, but... Um, so yeah, I would need 45 pieces, which I do have. I have 79. So if I want to, when I recraft these, I can make them all um, legendary. Of course, you do have to start with whatever um, it starts you at. I don't know if it starts at white, green, because I've never done an actual transmute. But we're going to need all the pieces going up to it. So if I start with a white one in order to make it green, I'm going to need two of the hemmings um, per piece of gear. So that would be 10. Um, same thing with the... Um, or I'm sorry, same thing with uh, turning it blue. I would need three of each. So three times five, that's going to be 15. If I do blue to purple, that's going to be 20 pieces because four times five. So just keep that in mind that that's how it works. Um, it's going to be it's going to be a little tricky trying to get all the pieces. Um, you don't have to. So like with the with the piece of gear that I was just showing you guys. This one here if i want this piece of gear i don't know if i want to do divine yet or impenetrable um that's why i have not actually done it yet because impenetrable is obviously more for pvp um you can actually see the difference here so my current set the greaves of julianos over on the right side that is the yellow piece um a lot more armor but it's also a heavy set and the impenetrable is it that increases critical resistance by 132 and then it takes 50% uh, less durability damage. Where the Divines, if I get Divines, it's going to be, it increases a Mundestone effect by 8.1, which I think goes to 9.1 on the yellow ones. Um, which I would obviously upgrade these if I decide to keep these. But like I said, I'm still trying to decide on what I want to do here. So, if I want to do all of that, the way that I can recraft everything, and I will say that this does require a DLC, um... Most of you, if you're new to the game anyway, you probably have the DLC. If you're returning to the game, um, you're either going to have to buy ESO Plus or you're going to have to at least buy one of the DLCs. The DLC that we're looking for is the um, the Clockwork City DLC. So if you guys came back just in time and you only bought ESO Plus for one month... Um, oh, it's not even... Oh, okay, it'll still show it though. Right here. Uh, the second day this month... Um, as long as you log in twice, I don't know if it, I think it knocks it off the end. So if you miss like three days, it would knock off these back three. I don't think it'll knock off the first three. I think it knocks off the back three. So as long as you log in twice, you'll be able to unlock this here. 
Um, so if you have ESO Plus, yes, you already have access to it, but this will ensure that you have access to it even after your ESO Plus goes away. But anyway, this is the DLC that we need. It is called Clockwork City. So let's go to Clockwork City and I'll show you guys exactly what we are looking for over there. So we're going to zoom out. This is all of Tamriel. Zoom out even further and top Clockwork City is not there. It is over here. So Clockwork City, bottom left. Go ahead and hold R2 to zoom in. And this should be the only way, waypoint that you'll have, this one down here. We're going to go ahead and zoom there so I can show you guys exactly where to go. Alright, and then once you are in Clockwork City, you're going to ignore the story quest here. Luckily, you don't have to mess with any of that. We're going to mount up here and we're going to just ride along this road going straight. We're going to go straight up into the main town here, which is called uh, Fortress of Brass. Brass Fortress. We're going to go straight across this bridge. If you guys want, obviously you've seen it on the map there. There is a, um, uh, what's it called? Um, Sky Shard down there on the bottom left. You can see it on the little compass there. That's why I have my camera turned. Um, but we're going to go straight into these big doors right here. And then once you're inside, um, just run straight and you will end up unlocking the uh, way shrine that's up over there. If for whatever reason it does not unlock, you may want to run up there and unlock it, but it should be the one right back here. It unlocked for me as soon as I came into the town though. But this is the uh, area you're looking for. You can see this is where all of the crafting stuff is. Um, but you'll come straight in here. It's called the Hall of Refined Techniques. And this thing here is exactly what you're looking for. This is the transmute station. Um, if you don't have access to this area, you can still transmute as long as you're in a guild. Um, a lot of the guilds will have guild halls and you can actually purchase these for, I think it's 1250 um, writ vouchers. So if you have 1250 writ vouchers, you can do it yourself. But if not, then you can join a guild that does have it. But you'll come in here. Um, it'll tell you that you can use, you know, it basically tells you what you want, but it says that you can use it to change the trait on an item, assuming you have the transmute crystals you need to have researched the trait you desire. Um, once uh, converted, the transmute crystals are consumed and the item is changed forever. So this is the transmute part. So if I already have a piece of item that I want and I want to train, change the trait on it. So say I picked up this dagger and I did not craft it, which I did craft this. You can see there at the bottom. Um, but say I picked up this dagger and it already had sharpened on it, and that's not what I wanted. Say I wanted um, divines or something like that, which I don't think you can put divines on daggers. But let's just say I wanted something different. I would come in here, I would add it, and then you can see I can change it to whatever. So is there divines on here? We have Nernhone, Decisive Training, Defending, Infused, uh, precise, charged, and powered. So it's not, um, you don't have divines, but if I wanted to change it from sharpened to nern honed, then, you know, that way I'm doing 15% uh, more damage with that weapon. You can see at the bottom left, it's going to cost me 50 transmute crystals. Personally, I think that's a little expensive, but if you want to, that's what you can do. We're not going to do that. I'm going to hit circle. We're going to back out of there. That's the transmute part. Here's the reconstruct part that I was telling you guys about. So if we hit X on this, and then we go down to whatever um, area we wanted to to look at our gear. So like I said, I'm doing the, fish, the vicious stat. So I'll go PVP, I'll go Cyrodiil, and I will go all the way down to the bottom where the uh, PVP items are. Or I'm sorry, where the vicious stat set is. So here we go. Say I wanted to craft... Um, we're probably not going to need head and shoulders because we are going to end up using those for... Um, uh, a monster set. So say I wanted to do these other five pieces here. So one, two, three, four, five. Jewelry we're going to save for another set and weapons we're going to save for another set. That's if I wanted to do it this way. So more than likely what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to do a heavy chest piece in a different type of um, set. But if I wanted to do a heavy chest piece here, what I would do is I would hit X on this. You can see here I can do it as a blue one. Um, and... I will pick whatever it is I want. Oh, actually, that's where you change the quality. So I'll pick whatever trait I want on it. So say I wanted to do um, impenetrable. Where'd it go? Right there. Impenetrable. 
Um, we're not going to worry about the enchantment. At least I don't think so. Not yet. Um, I think the enchantment is you can just go and re-enchant it yourself. <clears throat> As you can see, it's already putting a um, max magic on there, which is technically what I want anyway. So I may end up leaving that if I decide to do this. And then if I wanted to change it from blue to higher, then I can do either the purple piece here. And it tells you up in the top right that it, it's also going to cost you like whatever it costs. So, like I said, the four pieces of the um, elegant linings there, or I can do the four pieces of elegant lining and the eight pieces of drew wax in order to craft a legendary one. So, that is how you would go ahead and reconstruct this, and you can see that the um, the quality of the item does change the enchantment, and it also changes the trait as well as the actual set. So, if I only did blue for the actual set here, we're looking at the very bottom one is my concern there. Um, actually, it looks like that one doesn't change. But the one above that, the uh, the five piece adds uh, 1401 offensive penetration. If I ended up doing purple, 1435 yellow would be 1487. So all of those do increase. Um, it looks like only that very very last one doesn't. But 1550, 15525 is pretty high anyway. Um, and then of course, like I said, it increases the trait and the enchantments as well. So if you can do yellow, um, obviously I would say go for the legendary item. That's what you're going to be looking for anyway. If you can't do yellow, if you can't even do purple, craft whatever you can craft. If you can at least do the blue one, do the blue one. Obviously you can see it's not even going to cost you any blue stuff to go ahead and do that. Do the blue one for now and then go ahead and farm the, um, the purple and the yellow items. So you'll need elegant linings, whether you buy them off the auction house I'm sorry, from the guild traders, um, or if you um, just go out and farm stuff until you actually get that many of them. Of course, that'll take a while, but it's possible. But this is how you um, reconstruct any of the items. Like I said, as long as you do have, you know, whatever it is you're looking for, and the more that you have of that item, the cheaper it's going to cost. Um, you guys seen that that only costs 27 of the transmute crystals, where if I did something like this, top right, this is going to cost 75 because it's the only piece that I have learned from this set here. So if I did the Affliction set, a one piece, top right, cost 75. If we go back in and we look at that Vicious set, Vicious Death set, right here, you can see um, it's going to cost the 27 Transmute Crystals up in the top right. So I am still trying to get the sword. Um, I'm still working on whether I want to do Divines or Impenetrable anyway, so... I'm going to give it a few more days. We're going to see exactly what happens there, and I'll decide, hopefully, by the time I find that sword. If I don't find the sword, then I may just come and do it for the 27. Um, but like I said, I'm still not sure what I want to do, whether I want to do the impenetrable or if I want to do the divines. I'm doing a little bit of uh, research, or I guess I should say more research, because I've looked at it several times. Um, but I'm doing a little bit of more research and see which one's going to be better for me. I may even do a mix, do some of them impenetrable, and then do some of them um, uh, divines. Um, there's other options that I could pick too, but more than likely if I'm doing a PvP set, it's going to be one of those two. Uh, the divines is going to depend on what Mundestone I end up using, but that's another issue is I'm doing two whole new sets that I've never done before so I'm doing this well I won't tell you what guy what I'm doing um <laughs> you guys will see when I'm done with it but I'm doing two whole new sets I plan on having two five piece um sets and then I plan on having a completely different monster set currently the two five piece sets that I have um which can be used for pvp but I will say this character is really bad with sustain um but I can fix that using enchantments. It's just going to depend on how exactly I'm doing it. Uh, but currently I have the Giuliano set, which you guys can see here. Um, the very last one just adds 300 weapon and spell damage. It's not impressive, but the crit and the spell damage plus the max magicka, it does make it a good set. And then for the um, monster set, you guys can see I have the two-piece slime crawl set, which this one is kind of huge to me. Uh, it grants minor berserk at all times, increasing my damage done by 5% with both pieces. I have the headpiece and the shoulder piece. And also, um, I like sets like this where it's not something that has to proc. Like, like it'll be like, oh, a 15% chance to do this or a 12% chance to do this. 
This one, I just have it all the time. So that's what I like about these type of sets, which is kind of what I'm doing with one of the other sets I'm working on. And then the last thing that I have is, like I said, the Rattle Cage set. Um, this one here also does the same thing at all times. So gain uh, Major Brutality and Sorcery at all times, increasing my weapon and spell damage by 20%. That is also huge. Um, like I said, I have two five-piece sets and then the one um, monster set and that's all on just my front bar like they're all active right now so if you look at the Giuliano so you can see they're all highlighted if you look at all the rattle cage they're all highlighted and then of course my monster set there is all highlighted as well um, I don't think that's possible if you're not dual wielding uh, you can still do a four and a five piece set um, but I think you'll be lacking well, no, you can do a four and a five piece set if you're doing like um, a two hander, but with dual wielding with the daggers, that's why I like the daggers because the way I have this split up is one's Julianos and then the other is Rattle Cage. Um, and it even gives you kind of an extra thing here. So I have this one here that was the Dagger of the Seducer. Um, this was from a previous set that I crafted that I was working on. This was going to help with my sustain. But if I end up doing a full five piece set on that, I would obviously have to take away from the either the rattle cage or the Giuliano set, which I think I had planned on taking away from the Giuliano set. Um, mainly because that rattle cage gives me that 5% boost altogether. Right there? No. Oh, the Giuliano set gives a 5-piece. So this gives me the 20-piece, um, or the 20% altogether. So that's why I was going to go with the Giuliano's one, because I'm only losing that 5% versus the 20%. But I decided not to do that, and we're just going to build a whole new thing anyway. And then you can see the rest of my rattle cages down here on the jewelry. Um, I could switch out some of these two. Obviously, that one has Magicka Recovery. That one has Health Recovery. And that one has reduced the cost of my spells. So the re reducing the cost of the spells and the Magicka Recovery, or I'm sorry, the Health Recovery, those two can both be turned into the Magicka Recovery, which I think would help with Sustain too. But like I said, I was just trying stuff with this set, uh, with these sets. But I'm going to try something completely different. Um, so I came over here real quick just to talk to this Mastercraft Mediator. If we click on him, None of us. go into his store, and we're looking for... The transmute station, which he may not have it. Um, he does. There you go. So 1,250 uh, writ vouchers, as we talked about. Right now in this character, I have zero. That's because they are currently in the bank. Um, but I currently also don't have too many writ vouchers. If we look at withdraw and we go down to our writ vouchers, you can see I have 46 in the bank there. Um, but for those of you who have been following the channel, you guys also know that I have tons of writs that I am currently about to drop on my character and finish those up. So hopefully that'll get us closer to 1250, if not over. Um, but yeah, so we'll end up doing those at a later point in time. I'm not going to do those with you guys. I will probably just do a whole bunch of them and then either I'll show you guys when I decide to buy something or I'll show you guys after I buy something, but Obviously, I'll tell you guys what I bought, how much I bought it for, things like that. But I think that's going to be it for this one. Hopefully, you guys understand everything. Hopefully, I didn't miss anything out. So uh, just a brief recap. We went over the, um, the collection book, which a lot of people in the game call the sticker book. If you have any questions about that, let me know down in the comment section. Or, um, you know, just ask in general to people in the game. Obviously, people will help you out. Uh, some are friendlier than others, though. That's why I said if you want, uh, go ahead and put it down in the comment section. I'll definitely answer you guys. And then if you guys have any questions about the transmute or how it works, you need a little more details on it or anything, if you didn't understand it in this video, let me know down in the comment section as well. I'd be more than happy to help you guys out. But thank you all for joining me. Once again, questions, comments, concerns, put it down in the comment section. Um, don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And then also you guys can hit that notification bell icon. It'll let you guys know every time I post new videos or every time I go live. Um, one last thing I do want to apologize. I said that you guys were going to be getting the, um, uh, what's it called? The, the werewolf and the vampire, um, on how to become a werewolf, how to become a vampire. 
those are taking a little bit longer than anticipated just because of the way that the systems work. If you guys know what I'm talking about, then you'll understand. If you don't know, then you will understand once I am able to get those videos out. But you may not get those this week. Um, they will be on the channel eventually, though. It just depends on uh, the rotation of the ability to do so. I guess that's probably the best way to put it. But thanks all. Thank you all for joining me again, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.